Hi and welcome to this solo wargaming demonstration. Uh, today is the 8th of May, it's VE Day, it's the 75th anniversary of VE Day today so I thought I'd play a Second World War demonstration game to show you as we're still in lockdown here in the UK uh, how to do some solo wargaming. Uh, this is the Battle of the Hopkinai, uh, fought on the 8th of July 1943. It was fought between the uh, 200th Tank Brigade of the Soviet Army against uh, a battle group made up of reconnaissance units from the German Großdeutschland uh, division. They were the Großdeutschland were actually defending in this battle. Uh, they did actually win, and they they held off against the Soviet counter attack. Um, the Soviets are trying to get through their lines and get through to Verkhovkane, which is basically at the back end of the table down there. There's a lot of armour in this game, so because of that I've decided to play using rapid fire. And it's actually a rapid fire scenario, a scenario anyway, which I've taken from the rapid fire third supplement, uh, which is uh, scenarios for the Eastern Front, Russian Front. Uh, the reason I'm using rapid fire is because there's a lot of armour in it and rapid fire uh, deals with armour pretty well compared to some of the Lardis games. The Lardis games are a little bit too detailed for the amount of tanks that are on here to have to keep reminding yourself what things are, how they're damaged. So it's just going to make it a lot easier to play it this way. It's also a higher level game so rapid fire works for that. <clears throat> However, I am going to make a few changes. In rapid fire normally uh, units move a set distance. Uh, I'm throwing that out and I'm going to be putting in the Lardis uh, use of dice to move. So a fast tank, so the T-34s for example will be moving on a on 3D6. Uh, slower tanks or medium uh, speed tanks will be moving on a on two dice. Infantry will either move on two dice and not fire or one dice and then fire. That's uh, how I'm going to do it, just to make a slight change, just make it a little bit more variable. Uh, everything else I think is pretty much going to be kept as it is in rapid fire. The good thing about rapid fire and solo, although it is quite an old set of rules uh, and it shows it in the way it plays, it is an I go you go. So from a solo point of view it's fantastic because you just basically take a move for the units uh, for the side that you're playing at that particular time, do the best you can for them and then you literally swap over and do exactly the same for the, the opposition. And everything moves at once and then everything moves on the other side at once or fires or whatever. So the only thing that happens to interrupt an opponent's turn is if there is firing from uh, the opponent whose units haven't fired yet. So that again, the opportunity fire, you know, you just take it when, when you can. Uh, it's quite a simple game as well, like I say, for the armour in particular. Uh, it's pretty quick. It should be pretty brutal. There's a lot of uh, T-34s, some Lee Grants, and there's also, so I've got quite a nice mix of Lend-Lease vehicles, and there's also a few Stugs and a few other bits and pieces of armour for the Gross Deutschland. So, enough waffle. I'll show you the table, show you what we've got, and uh, get this game started. Okay, the Soviets <clears throat> have got a collection of pretty much uh, six T-34s, 76ers, and these two Lee Grants, uh, Len Lease. They've also got these trucks behind them, uh, which have got a motorised infantry unit in them. They've got a 57mm anti-tank gun here, uh, with their uh, commanding officers, and also a uh, <coughs> 37mm anti-aircraft gun, and this uh, 76 mil uh, anti-tank gun. They've also got support from uh, the Stu uh, not the Stu sorry, the SUs uh, as an independent tank brigade, and also uh, this Katyusha, which course should cause a bit of damage. Now they are facing, as I said, the Grosch Deutschland uh, reconnaissance unit, and they're made up of several different bits and pieces. This is an armoured observation post, Panzer III. That's uh, spotting for the Vesps, I'll show you those in a second, but we've got a couple of 250s uh, with infantry hiding in the woods there. Over here we have half a unit of the Stugs, there's four Stugs in total, here are two of them. Uh, these are sitting in the woods. We've also got anti-aircraft gun behind, because there are aircraft in this scenario. We've got more Stugs in here with the 75mm Pac-40. Uh, which has been towed by the 
251 there. Over here we also have some more infantry, another Stug in these woods here, uh, supported by a 75mm 250. We've got the mobile defence or the mobile reserve, is these uh, 222s and a 232. These have only got 20mm auto cannons, so they're going to be a bit useless against the Soviet armour, but they at least will be good against their infantry. 82mm mortar at the back, the two VESPs I mentioned, these are the mobile artillery at the moment. Over here we've got more infantry, uh, these, are, these guys are being transported by uh, Schwimmwagens. Uh, we've also got a Stummel as well with 75mm gun, so that should be good against the armour. The headquarters over here is a CO and another 250 but that's got a 37mm gun on it which may or may not be okay against the T-34s. And then over here, finally, we got the last of the infantry on the left flank. So what I've done is I've taken as much of the, uh, the woodland and put the German units in it, so that at least they're in cover and they, they've not been spotted yet. So as I say, let's get on with this, uh, and I'll talk about it as we go along. Okay, the first turn for the Soviets, they've basically shifted forward as much as they can. What I've done is, because the T-34s are fast, I've given them three dice. Uh, they get a plus one per dice on the road. Uh, all, everything gets a minus two for forests, uh, minus one for rough ground on each dice. The slower vehicles, which is pretty much everything else, uh, have been given two dice. So uh, the T-34 should hopefully speed forward a little bit more than the others, so like this guy's out in the front here. And this now presents us with opportunity fire from the Stugs all the way across here. If you fire an opportunity fire, it means you can't fire in your next turn, or you can't have fired in your previous turn. Uh, <coughs> so they're going to do that, they're going to interrupt the T-34s, fire away at them, uh, there are spotting rules in rapid fire, but everybody at the moment is in the open, so basically everybody's been spotted. The only ones that haven't are these guys in the woods here, and they're too far away to be spotted anyway from these uh, units. So I'm going to ignore that for now, and the Stugs are just going to open fire on these T-34s and let's see what damage they can do. Right, I'm going to work my way through the German guns that are firing. We've got the Stug with the short 75mm, three Stugs with long 75mm. We've also got a pack 40 and also the uh, 250 with a short 75mm gun. Uh, in rapid fire you have a gun class, in this case this Stug has a gun class of 4, uh, sorry it has a gun class of 3 and it is firing against uh, an armour class. The T-34's armour class in this all of these cases is C, so a gun class of 3 firing against a C class, I need a 4 or above, but the T uh, the fire the target has moved, so that's a minus one. They're at medium range, so that's no difference, and that's it. So it's basically, uh, what do we say we needed? A three or above, a four or above, that becomes a five or a six. So this is for the short barrel. So that's a miss. We then go on to the next stug, which is the long barrel. Uh, that's actually got a, a, a gun class of two. Still against the same kind of armour, so C. So a gun class against C is three minus one because it's got a uh, because the target moved. So we need a four or above to hit for this one. That's a bit as well. Uh, same with the uh, pack forty firing down here as well. So again, that's another four or above. That's one hit. And then we roll again to see what the damage is. Uh, this is firing at this guy here. Uh, short or medium range, which it is. Uh, one or two is light damage. Three or four is heavy. Five or six is destroyed. So that's light damage on the first T-34. And I use these markers to show light damage. Uh, damage is cumulative. Two light damages will become a heavy damage. Two heavy damages are destroyed. Uh, so that was the pack 40. The next stug over there, firing up here. Uh, next target, same again, so we need a 4, 5 or 6 on this. So that's a 4, so that's another hit. Same again, 5, 6 is destroyed. 
and our first T34 has been taken out. Now we've got the other Stug over there firing at these guys in the coal field. Uh, he is firing uh, same again with his gun class of two. So that's a miss. And then finally uh, we've got the uh, the short 75mm gun on the 250. That's a gun class of four. Uh, so that is actually a five to hit now. But that becomes a six because of the movement. So let's see if that does nothing. So they've managed to take out one T-34 out of all that firing. Right, so chance for the T-34s to fire back. They are firing with a gun class of three. The Stugs have basically got an armour of C. Uh, so this immediately is straight away, it's, um, they need a four or above. However, they have moved. These are also uh, partially concealed. So it's a minus two on that. So that becomes a six or, well, six to hit. Uh, <coughs> the, they've automatically spotted them because they fired and they're within 48 inches, so I don't need to work that out. So I'll work my way through these T-34s, see what we can hit, if anything, and go from there. So these two are going to try to hit this Stug and this Stug. So the first one needs a six. That's no, it's a four. Second one needs a six. That's a six, that's a hit. So we roll again. Uh, Five or six again are kills, one to two light damage, four, uh, three or four is medium damage. So that's a kill, so one stug is straight, taken out straight away. And that was those two that fired. This guy could probably just see that Panzer III observation, and he is also an armour class of C, so that's going to be the same again, so that's another six to hit. That's a miss. We've got these two. He's firing across at him. A six, no. The lightly damaged T34 on a six will be firing at the Stug on the edge there. No. And then we've also got the SUs there, not in woodland. So this guy is going to be firing directly ahead, as is the SU-76, both of this guy here. The SU-76 has a better gun. It's a gun class two, not three. So we'll do the, uh, the, the larger one, it's a hundred. I can't remember what it is actually. I think it's SU-100. SU-122. That's firing. That's got a gun class of three. So that's a six to hit. That's a miss. The SU-76 uh, is a gun class of two. So that needs a five or a six to hit. So that's a hit as well. So we'll see what happens to this Stug. Uh, two, that's light damaged. So this one's been destroyed. This one has been light damaged. Okay, and finally the Soviets turn. They're going to fire their Katyusha rocket launcher directly at this stug here, which they can see. Uh, so they're going to need, it's in the fifth range band, so it's going to need a five or a six to hit. And then it'll need a six to kill it. So let's see if we hit. That's a miss. So that's ineffectual. Okay, it's the end of the Soviet turn, so it goes over to the Germans. Everything's pretty even, Stevens, at the moment. The Soviets have had one tank taken out, as have the Germans. They've had one of their stugs, stugs taken. They've also both had a light damage tank on uh, one of their vehicles as well. Because the Stugs have lost a tank, it means they're going to have to do a morale test. That's the first thing you do in a turn. They need a three or above to pass the test and carry on. Anything below that uh, is a different morale. They may, they may have no, no offensive action or they may have to retire. Uh, they have a minus one because they've lost one tank. So basically roll a d6, minus one, and that'll tell us what the result the result is. That's a six, minus one is five. I said three or above is fine, <coughs> so they can continue. However, unfortunately the Stugs fired in the reserve turn of the Soviets, so they can't fire, but there are other things I can do. So I'll get these moving and see what we can do. The Germans haven't moved, but they're in defensive positions, and no point in them moving. But they are firing their Vesps. Uh, using the observation post here. This first of all needs to contact the VESPs. Uh, if I roll a 1, the radio doesn't go through. Let's see, 1. <laughs> the radio doesn't go through. So that is basically the Germans turn over. Okay, first of all we've got to test for morale for the Soviets. Uh, this, this unit, these two tanks, uh, these are part of the same unit. So uh, we've lost one, so that's a minus 1. Again, a 3 or above is continue as normal, uh, but anything less than that will be an adverse morale effect. So look, that's a six, minus one is five, 
perfectly fine to continue everybody else there's no problem uh, light damage doesn't affect morale right let's see this what happens here the soviets have moved forward they're bombing down this central road they're also attacking on this flank as well so the stugs now get to fire again in their reserve fire move so the first one has got a gun class of four sorry three against c class armor so that's a four this is now in short range though so that cancels out the movement so it's a four or above to hit that's a miss uh, over here though we have this stug firing at this t-34 this has got a gun class of two against c armor which is a three same again cancels out because it's short range so that is a three or above that's a miss as well oh this is not looking good for the stugs however we also have the Stugs and the pack uh, 40s down here as well, and the uh, the the light uh, 250, which has a gun class of four. So I'll start with that because that's the worst. That's firing at this T34 here. It has moved. Uh, we're in medium range now, so it's firing at four, firing at starting on a five minus one because it's moved. So that's a six. That's a miss. Uh, we've got the other Stug over here. That has a gun class of 2 against C armor, so that's starting with a 3. Uh, and again, this has moved, so that becomes a 4. That's a hit. As we said again, uh, medium range, 1 or 2 light damage, 3-4 uh, is heavy, and 5-6 is a kill. So that's heavy damage on that, so that neutralizes that for the next turn. Uh, we also have the pack 40 over here as well, which is now firing at this T-34 and that is also firing on a 4 or above. And that's a miss as well. Absolutely pathetic showing there from the uh, the Germans. Okay, let's see if the Soviets can do any better. Uh, this guy has been neutralised so he can't fire anyway this turn. This one is going to fire, as is this one, both are going to fire at the uh, Pack 40 because that's the only target they can really see from beyond that uh, hill here. So we see how far they are 24 inches and 22 inches divide that by 8 uh, that is uh, 1 band to 3 bands so they need 3 or above minus 1 because they're both moving they're both going to fire the same so 3 or above uh, <coughs> becomes a 4 or above so one of them is hit that then does tell you it's on the bottom here 10 points on table 4 on the hit table table 4 we roll the d6 a 2 is 1 kill so that's 1 kill 1 of the crew there but we also have these T-34s over here as well they're going to fire at the Stugs here uh, so they're at close range but they have moved so that's minus 1 but a plus 1 so it blanks out but they've got a gun class of 3 against an armour class of C, so they are on 4s. So I'll do the top one first of all, 4 or above, missed. Second one, 4 or above, that's a hit. 1 or a 2, uh, light damage, 3, 4, heavy damage, 5, 6, kill. That's a kill, so that's another Stug down. Okay, for the Soviets we've got the Lee Grant, he's going to fire out the Stug over there in the woods as well, the one that's likely damaged. Uh, it's got a uh, class 3 gun against a uh, C armor, so that's a 4, but it moved, so that becomes a 5. So that's a 1, that's a miss. And then finally the Soviets are going to try to fire with their Katyusha at the uh, pack 40. This needs a 6 to hit. It's 48 inches away just on. That's a hit. So that gives a 4 inch burst, which affects both the pack 40 and the uh, 250 behind it. The 250 will be destroyed on a 6, so let's do that first. Uh, no, that's okay. But the uh, Katyusha does 12 points of damage on table 5, so I think this might wipe out that pack 40. Let's have a look. 4 is 3 kills, so that's wiped out the crew. So yeah, it's destroyed the pack 40. Okay, back with the Germans now. Uh, the Stugs are going to have to do another morale test. They've lost two tanks 
so this time it's a minus two on their roll. So let's check that out. One minus two is minus one. So that is them surrendering or routing. So they will route off table or as far as they can get. They're not surrounded, so they don't surrender. So that's a bit of a blow for the Germans. Oh well, I'll get them moved. <clears throat> well, that wasn't a great turn for the Germans. They lost the stuck here and the stuck here is fled back. This one has got off table. Uh, so what they've done instead is bring forward the Vesps because they've got the biggest guns. They've also brought forward a 37mm gun down there, ready to fire, uh, hopefully at some point. They've got their 75mm Stummel and the 75mm gun here. Uh, they're keeping their... Uh, armoured cars in reserve at the moment just because their guns can't actually affect the T-34s. Uh, that's what I'm going to wait until to release them until the Soviet infantry on the board. So uh, the the armoured thrust of the Soviets is certainly working at the moment but it's over to them to do their morale test and it's they've only got one morale test and it's on these guys here. So I'll get that done quickly. They are 1d6 minus 1 We'll see what they get. Six minus one, five. They can continue. They're fine. So I'll get these moved and we'll see where we're at after that. Right, the Soviets are exploiting the uh, gap now in the line of the German defence with the Stugs gone and uh, really hammering forward here. But these uh, trucks are going to get caught in the crossfire from the, um, the, the, the infantry over there. There's eight of them. He gives them a plus one. Uh, on the firing charts, so that takes it to a 9, but they're firing at long range and they're soft cover because they're vehicles they're firing at. So they actually need, they need to cause two casualties on the vehicle to destroy it. They can get two casualties by only rolling a 6. So there's probably not a great deal, of, not a great chance of them doing this, but let's have a go. That's a 2. Nope, that's nothing unfortunately for the Germans. And the German other reserve fire. Uh, this guy down here, the 250, is going to fire at the heavily damaged T34. Needs a 6. That's a miss. And the Stummel up here is going to fire down at this T34. This needs a 5 or a 6. And that's a miss as well. So the Germans are doing really good this turn. Okay, we're firing back with the Soviets now then. Uh, this is firing at the E-class armour with the uh, three class guns. So that's a Starts on a 2, but that goes up to 4 because it's moved and they are partially concealed. 4 or above, that's a miss. Uh, this T-34 will do the same, 4 or above, that's a miss. This T-34 will fire at this 251 here, same again, so for, actually no, this is a 3 or above because it's in short range. Uh, that's a miss though. This T-34 will fire up at the Stummel up there, uh, so that's again another four or above, uh, that's a miss as well. Uh, so they're not done particularly well either out of that. However, there's one final shot. The Katyusha will fire down here, needs a six to hit. That's a miss as well. Okay, so we managed to get some of the Germans a bit further forward with some of these heavier weapons now. Uh, this 250 is firing its anti-tank gun, uh, its, its, it's uh, high explosive gun at the middle Soviet vehicle there. It needs a 2 or above and it's moved so that's a 3 or above. It's a hit, that's a 4, that is a hit. Uh, it is doing 6 points on table 4 which means it's going to need 2 or more to destroy the vehicle and that needs a 6 then to destroy that vehicle. 4, that's nothing. Okay. Uh, over here though we have the Stummel firing at this T-34 again. Uh, no it can't because it fired in its reserve turn, so it can't fire this turn. But the two uh, Vesps can, and they've got a gun class of 3 against C-class armour. So they need a 4 but they've moved, so uh, that becomes a 5. But this one is in close range from this guy, so that becomes a 4 again. So that is a hit. So again, 5 or 6 is a kill. Uh, 1, that's light damage, but it's already light damage, so that becomes heavy damage. So that's neutralised that one. The other wefts will fire at the same target. Let's do that same target. So that's another uh, short range shot. So we're looking at a 4 or above again. 
So that's a three, that's a miss. But they've heavily damaged that T34 at least. Right, let's take a look, quick look at the situation at the moment. We've got the Soviets are now debusting from their vehicles, so the infantry are out. Uh, we're up against these, uh, the, the Stummel and the two Vesps. Uh, there's not a great deal left over here. There's this little 250 facing off against two T-34s with a group of infantry. Uh, we've also got this 250 here with a 37mm gun, which has been now been faced off by the 57mm gun, the Lee Grant, and the SU-76. Uh, you could probably put a bet on who's going to come out best here, and I don't think it's going to be the Germans. Right, let's start off with some firing. Uh, German reserve fire. This is going to fire at the SU-76. Uh, it's starting off with a 5, uh, but it has moved, so that becomes a 6 to hit. And that's a miss. Uh, there's no more German fire in here, I think. But we do have the Soviets to fire on this side. So the 76 is now going to fire at this. The 76's gun is a gun class of 2 against E armour. It's not going to last very long, that's I don't think. 2 or above becomes a 3. That's a 6, that's a hit. So again, uh, 6 is a kill. That's a kill. So that was straight taking that out. Uh, that means these don't get to... Oh no, they can't fire these. Uh, that moved anyway, so it can't fire. But the uh, Grant can fire over here. And this is firing on a 80 class of 3 against an E-Armour vehicle again. So the 80 class of 3. 2 or above, it moved. So that becomes a 3 or above. So that is a hit, so roll again. And four is a heavy damage. We also have the uh, SU-122 here as well. Uh, that's actually going to fire at the infantry here. So the range is 10. So that needs a two or above, but it's moved, so it becomes a three or above. So that's a hit. It has a hitting power of 12 points on table four. Find our 12 points on table 4. That has killed 3 of those infantry out of the 8 that are in those woods. Uh, the 76 can't fire either. Well, I think that's all there is over there. So we'll swap over and have a look what's happening down on the road. So we've got the Stummel here. That's going to fire at the T-34. Uh, it's a C-class uh, armour being fired at by a 4-class AT gun, so that's starts on a 4. Uh, neither have moved, it is a close range, so a plus 1, so that becomes a uh, 3 or above. So that's a hit. It can't take any more damage, uh, so that has destroyed that T-34. Other German reserve fire will be these infantry here. I'm going to fire at the... Soviet infantry there, and they are at a range of 12, so they're in close range, I believe. Yes, oh no, so they're in medium range. And they are the figures plus one, there's eight figures, becomes a nine. Medium range in the open, we roll one dice and read off a table, a six, it's the best they can get. Medium range in the open, seven and nine, so that's three killed. So they've taken hit straight away. And meanwhile, on this side of the table, the German uh, 250 with its 75 mil gun is firing. Starts on a four. It needs sorry, it needs a five or above. The Soviets have moved, so that takes it to a six to hit. Nope, that's a miss. So now we go into the Soviet firing. So we've got the T34 firing at the infantry. Needs a two or above because it's close range. That's a miss. This one is firing at the uh, 250 with the 75mm gun on it. Uh, it has a gun class of 3 against C, uh, uh, E class armour. 2 or above, minus 1 because it's moved, minus 1 because it is in concealed. So 4 or above. That's a miss as well. We've also got this uh, Soviet vehicle machine gun firing at medium range uh, into light cover. It needs a 6 to kill one German soldier. Nope. And in the centre of the field, we've got this T-34 firing at the uh, west. But it starts on a 2, but goes to 3 because it's moved. 
uh, that's a miss. We've also got three infantry, they're going to fire at the Germans there in medium, in soft cover. So they become a four, so what have we got there, that's a six. Fire the four, in soft cover, that's one hit. Okay, in this German turn they've uh, done quite a lot of manoeuvring. They've actually brought in their mobile reserve of the, uh, the scout cars, they brought those up to see what they can do with them. Uh, they've also tried to get this Hummel, uh, the, the, sorry, the Wesp over here to take on some of these T-34s. Uh, the Hummel here has moved down a little, Schnummel, sorry, and the Wesp is up there. So the Wesp is going to take a shot at the T-34. We've got a gun class, three against four, so it starts on a four. Uh, that has moved, so that becomes a five. That's a miss. The only other thing is this Wesp here, which will fire at the T-34, so again a five. That's a six, that's a hit, it can't take any more damage, so that will destroy that T-34 at least. Second Vesp shoots and fires, hits this, it can't take any more damage, so that destroys it completely. Okay, just before we go into the Soviet turn, let's take a look at the situation as it is. So, the German infantry have pulled back from the front of that wood, they were trying to escape but they couldn't get there. Uh, a T-34 has been knocked out on that corner. We've got the Grossdeutschland uh, mobile support coming up here to try to take on some of these infantry which are in the centre road here you can see they're still getting out of their their trucks uh, we've knocked out our T-34 at the front the other one hasn't taken any damage the rest of the Germans on the left of their their left flank have started to pull back as well because over here the Soviets have got quite a lot of big guns and vehicles that they're definitely going to be using to take out some of these lighter vehicles that the Germans have got. So at the moment, there's still all to play for, but the Soviets have still got quite a lot of reserves up here, and a lot of these are big gun things as well. Right, there's a whole load of confusion in the middle of the table, but it's a German reserve fire. Uh, the only ones that can fire is the Stummel here, and the 250 down here as well. So this will start, needs a 6 because the Soviet tank moved. Uh, that's a miss, and same down here. Uh, no, actually it needs a 4 because the tank didn't move and it's at short range. And that's a miss as well, so they've done really well for themselves again. Uh, so over to the Soviets, they are now firing with their gun classes. They're starting with a 2. This guy over here doesn't need anything more than a 2, but minus 3, minus 1 because he's concealed. So that is a... Uh, that's a two, that's a miss, because he needed a three. This guy over here is firing at the uh, the stumble, so he is needing a three, because he moved. So that's a hit. So again, four, five, six is a kill. Uh, light damage. We also have this guy here, he's firing. Uh, he needs a uh, two or above, but he comes a three because he's moved. So that's a hit, and on this one, see what it does, that's a destroyed. So that's another German tank out. Over on this side, we've got a bit of a turkey shoot, actually, all, all told. Uh, that's got an AT class of 3, this has got an AT class of 2, and this has got an AT class of 2. Uh, so this is going to fire at this, this is going to fire at this, and this is going to fire at this. I think this is C class armour. Yes, that's C-class armour. So we'll start here. Short range, but it's moved. Uh, firing at E-class armour. It's a 2 or above. That's a 2 or above. That's destroyed it because it's already heavily damaged. We then have uh, the 76mm uh, firing at the C-class armour. So this is 2 against C. Is a 3 or above. Uh, that moved, so that becomes a 4 or above. That's a miss. And finally we got the 2 class against the E, so that again is a 2 or above, but both moved, so a 3 or above. So that's another hit. Uh, let's see what happens to it. 1 is light damage. Uh, not as effective as I thought it would be, but they've certainly uh, taken out a, a bit there. Right, the Germans uh, are, at the moment, kind of retreating pretty much across the board but they are holding out here in the centre, so we've got the, uh, the two Vesps and the 250 that can fire this turn. So the Vesp will fire 
sorry no the 250 can't it's just the vest so the vest will go fire at the t34 there uh, it needs a four and above that's a miss and the other one is firing at the same target but it moved so it needs a five and above so that's a miss as well right the soviets are really pushing forward now uh, the germans are taking shooting at them again with their uh, with the stummel and with the 250 they both need a five to start with because uh, they've got a four plus one against the armor goes up to a four because there's been no movements in the short range so four or above that's a miss and over here for the stummel same again four or above on that t34 that's hit it let's see what damage it does uh, light damage so not as effective well as effective as usual basically so the Soviet firing is now including the uh, air cobra that has turned up so that needs a three or above it's firing at the um, <coughs> the uh, the wasp there in the center that's a six so what damage does it do that's destroyed the wasp uh, we have the Lee Grant which is firing on a uh, 80 class of 3 against the Stummel here so it needs a 2 or above but it's moved but it's close range so it's a 2 or above that's also a hit see what it does to it uh, that's heavy damage uh, so that has destroyed it so that's another one down we've also got our T-34 here firing at the uh, 232 that's uh, again uh, starting on a 2 um, and there's been no movement no sorry that has moved so becomes a three short range becomes a two again so that's a hit and uh, that is light damage we also have this t34 here which is firing at the vesp over here same again starting on a two neither of these moved or oh, the vesp did uh, yes he did so that's a hit anyway a five and damage that is heavy damage so that's neutralized that for the next turn oh things aren't looking particularly good for the uh, germans over here they're soon seeing a lot of their stuff disappear uh, so let's have a look we've got the 76 over there that will fire at the uh, 222 here that's i'm assuming he's got an e armor yep e armor so that's a two becomes a three short range becomes a two again that's a miss and the 76, uh, the 122 behind it, same again, is a hit. And that's a destroyed as well. This is quickly turning into the, the graveyard of the German army here. Perfect for VE Day. The confrontation here between the Stummel and the T-34. Starts with a 2, uh, goes down to 1 because it's close range, neither have moved. But it goes up to 2 again because it's partially concealed. So that's a hit and heavy damage and our final shot is uh, the 76 mil gun firing against the observation post vehicle needs a three or above becomes a four because that moved that's a hit and that's a kill as well so in that turn the germans have lost one two three four vehicles two heavy damaged and one light damaged oh they're not going to recover from that Okay, let's just take a quick look at what's happening at the moment after that tumultuous turn for the Germans. So up on the top of the hill here, uh, they've basically lost most of their armour. Uh, they've got Soviet armour pushing in from the side. They lost their observation post tank. These guys are retreating. They've taken pretty much hits on pretty much every vehicle at this point. There's a couple here that aren't yet damaged. This 250 has been here for a while now and hasn't moved but it has been heavily damaged facing off against that T-34. T-34 is the Grants and the Air Cobra are really pushing in on this side here. We've still got the infantry coming through this woodland. Uh, they haven't made a great deal of their presence to be known yet but they probably will do. We've also got another Lee Grants behind and the uh, SUs as well. They're still moving forward here uh, looking for more targets. I really don't think the Germans are going to last particularly longer uh, than they are at the moment. They're in a very precarious position. So here's a quick look at what the Germans have done. They've basically retreated across their entire front. There's not a great deal they can do at this point. They have only really 
a couple of anti uh, tank guns and the rest of it is, is infantry, the Russian infantry are basically hiding in the woods so they're not able to get at them anyway and uh, they just had to pull back so we'll go on to the Soviets, see what they can do the Germans have been forced back, the Soviets are still pushing forward uh, this I think is pretty much in the bag but let's let's just go through some of these things and see what happens so we've got the aerial attack again that's come back in the um, uh, Cobra so that is rolling on three four five six that's a hit uh, firing at one of the uh, triple twos uh, five six is a kill that's another kill so that's another German vehicle out we have uh, the tank here firing at the German vehicles that's firing on a two or above because it hasn't moved that's a hit that's destroyed as well we've got t34 here firing at the wesp again that's a hit so that's another one destroyed we also have this t34 has moved forward it's going to fire at one of the 222s over there uh, that's firing at a two but it's moved and it's medium range so that becomes a four or a five or a six that's another hit and see what that does to that. Uh, that's a light damage on that one. And let's have a look on the other side of the table. Right, we've got some uh, Soviet firing. We do have the 76mm gun which is just off camera. So I'm going to roll that first and that's firing here at the uh, 232. So that needs a... Uh, it was a 3 or above and that's a hit because that had moved. So 5-6 is a kill. So that's gone straight away. Um, what else have we got? We've got the uh, the uh, anti-aircraft gun here, which can be shot at by the 76 there. So that's firing at that. That's going to hit it on a 2 or above again. So that's a hit. Uh, that is destroyed on a 4, 5 or a 6. And that's destroyed as well. There's nothing else over here, really. The IS-122, the, the, the SU-222 can fire at. Okay, I'm calling that the final turn. The Germans have literally lost every single vehicle apart from uh, this 250 here, the uh, 222 over here, a couple of uh, swim wagons, the truck with the mortar, and also a couple of Kubel wagons on this side, which were probably about to get annihilated. This central section of the battlefield is completely littered with German bur burning hulks. Uh, this was obviously their last stand here. Uh, they got absolutely hammered. The Soviets have pushed all the way across the table, all the way down. A uh, really good Soviet victory. I've played this game several times before in the past and it has uh, gone either way. It's a pretty good balanced scenario actually and I think the thing that did for the Germans in this particular one was a loss of their stubs very early on. If they'd have held a little while longer they may have just held off the Soviets just enough. But in this case they didn't get that far and uh, they pushed all the way back. Well, I hope you've enjoyed watching this. Uh, I enjoy playing it. Uh, good game. Uh, rapid fire does work very well with armour. Uh, it's a very quick game. It does say so on the tin. Uh, if you've enjoyed it, please look at my other videos. There's plenty of other solo AARs. Uh, there's also lots of other wargaming content as well. Uh, thanks. Subscribe. Click like, smash that like button, all the other things that they say on YouTube. So thank you very much again for watching.